In the first quarter alone, Boeing lost about $4 billion USD and is expected to spend more than $8 billion in cash on safety enhancement measures in the first half of this year. In the past five years, this group has also lost up to $32 billion, a large part of which came from the global grounding of the 737 MAX family. It is clear that trouble from this aircraft continues to haunt aircraft manufacturing giant Boeing. So what is Boeing currently facing? Let's find out in today's episode. But before we start, if you're new, please help us improve this channel even further by double checking that you've hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our updates. Now let's dive in. The Federal Aviation Administration recently confirmed it has issued an airworthiness directive, a legally enforceable order, requiring operators of certain Boeing 737 aircraft to check passenger service equipment's oxygen concentrators to ensure they are in the correct position. A misplaced oxygen concentrator can prevent the plane's emergency oxygen mask from providing oxygen to passengers in case of a loss of cabin pressure. This directive will apply to certain Boeing 737 8 9, 200, 700, 800, and 900 ER aircraft models. The directive stated that if not resolved, this condition could result in the displaced PSU oxygen generator becoming inoperable, resulting in the inability to provide supplemental oxygen to passengers in the event of decompression. Accordingly, aviation maintenance personnel must conduct a visual inspection of the oxygen concentrator installation, paying special attention to the heat sinks that maintain the strap, and take corrective actions to ensure that these devices are serviceable. Any possible corrective action must be taken within 150 days. The order affects 2,612 737 aircraft registered in the United States. The average plane has 61 oxygen concentrators and each has two belts. Airplane manufacturer Boeing has asked airlines to update some of the wires holding the oxygen supply devices on this plane. The reason is that there is suspicion that a new type of adhesive used on the retaining straps since August 2019 can cause these devices to move up to 0.75 inches, about 1.9 centimeters in some cases. Boeing said it has returned to using the original adhesive for all new shipments to ensure the oxygen supply devices are held securely in place. And it also said that no malfunctioning equipment was discovered when inspecting the active fleet and undelivered aircraft. Since the beginning of this year, this manufacturer has been subject to FAA supervision many times. In January, the agency ordered the temporary grounding of some Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircraft operated by U.S. airlines, and give notice to resume flying until there is confirmation that they are safe. The agency is also investigating Boeing's manufacturing practices and production lines, including those related to subcontractor Spirit Aerosystems, increasing oversight of Boeing and reviewing the possibility of system changes. In February, Administrator Whitaker was at Boeing's factory to see the 737 production line and hear directly from Boeing, engineers, mechanics, and others about the quality control process. The administrator also went to Alaska Airlines headquarters to discuss the left middle door stopper that blew on Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 on January 5th while in flight. The FAA then stopped expanding Boeing's 737 MAX production and considered using a third party to monitor Boeing. The six-week audit of Boeing and Spirit Aerosystems found multiple instances of the companies allegedly failing to comply with manufacturing quality control requirements. The FAA has identified non-compliance issues in Boeing's manufacturing, parts handling and storage, and product control procedures. Also provide these details to the public as an update to the agency's ongoing investigation. Regarding the 737 MAX lawsuit, Boeing reached a plea agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice in two accidents that killed at least 346 people. Speaking to the press, a Boeing representative said, We have reached an agreement in principle on terms of a resolution with the Justice Department. Court documents filed in Texas a day earlier showed that Boeing agreed to plead guilty to conspiring to defraud the U.S. government during the licensing process for the MAX aircraft. Boeing will have to pay a criminal fine of $243.6 million. The company also agreed to invest at least $455 million USD over the next three years to strengthen its safety and regulatory compliance programs, according to the filing. The U.S. Department of Justice will appoint an independent monitor to monitor the company's compliance. This monitoring party will have to submit an annual report on the company's progress to the court. Boeing will also comply with this challenge period, during which the company pledges not to violate any laws until the monitor's three-year monitoring period ends. Compensation for the victim's families will be decided by the court. This sweetheart deal fails to recognize that because of Boeing's conspiracy, 346 people died, said Paul Cassell, an attorney representing some of the relatives. Through crafty lawyering between Boeing and Department of Justice, the deadly consequences of Boeing's crime are being hidden. 
With the above results, the victims' families still have not calmed down. They criticize this as a sweet deal for Boeing after causing 346 unfortunate passengers to die. This agreement made unfair concessions to Boeing, did not hold Boeing responsible for the deaths of the victims, and hoped for more severe penalties. American media evaluate Boeing's guilty plea as important because the corporation has never been convicted of a serious crime in decades. A guilty plea could potentially threaten Boeing's contracts with the U.S. Department of Defense and NASA. However, the agreement helps Boeing avoid going to court, which could cause more of the company's internal problems to become public. Besides, the above move will also make it easier for the company to seek approval for the merger plan of aerospace structure design and manufacturing company Spirit Aerosystems. In addition, Boeing also appointed a new director later this year as a way to open a new chapter after a series of disastrous scandals. Also recently, a plane with a wheel falling off the landing gear when departing from Los Angeles International Airport was confirmed to be a nearly 30-year-old Boeing 757 operated by United Airlines. Surely you have not forgotten that four months ago, a wheel falling off the rear wing of United Flight 35 also damaged several cars in the parking lot of San Francisco International Airport after the Boeing 777-200 took off on March 7th. The wheel has been recovered in Los Angeles, and we are investigating what caused this event, United spokeswoman Anusha Rasta said, and added that no injuries were reported on the plane or the ground. There were 174 passengers and seven crew members on board United, Flight 1001, departing from Los Angeles to Denver. Unlike the March loss of gear, the pilots continued to Denver, where the plane landed without incident. The 757 has main wheel tires the same size as Boeing's 737 model but the aircraft manufacturer has doubled the number of tires on each bogey, meaning the 757 has a total of eight tires on the main landing gear. One of the reasons for having so many tires is to prevent the tire from bursting or being lost, meaning the plane can continue to take off and land safely. It's true that the people on the flight weren't too worried about this incident, but people on the ground are different. A big danger of this incident is that people and property can be damaged by falling wheels. The 737 MAX incident caused great damage to Boeing's reputation. Many airlines have canceled or postponed new aircraft orders from Boeing. This not only affects revenue, but also affects the company's competitive position in the global aviation market. Boeing had to change senior leadership and reform the product design and testing process to ensure safety. The company not only had to set aside billions of dollars to compensate victims' families and pay for legal fees related to lawsuits, but also suffered huge losses due to having to temporarily stop production and delivery of the 737 MAX for a long time. Perhaps the aircraft manufacturer has never been in such a precarious situation as it is now. 